Have you ever wandered through a hardware store aisle, looked at a wall of nails and thought, why are there so many kinds? Some are smooth, some are twisted, some are tiny, others could hold up a house. What gives? As simple as they seem, nails are anything but random. Each one is designed with a specific purpose, tailored to materials, tools, and tasks. And choosing the wrong one? That can mean the difference between a structure that holds or one that collapses. Today, we're diving into the surprisingly sophisticated world of nails and why your project needs the right one for the job, right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. All nails have the same anatomy, a head, a shank, that's the body, and a point. But how those parts are shaped changes everything. The shape of the head determines how visible the nail will be once driven. The shank influences how deeply and securely the nail grips into the material. And the point? It affects how easily it penetrates and whether it might split the wood. Even subtle design differences can dramatically change how a nail behaves under load or stress. That's why builders and woodworkers often keep several types on hand, because one nail definitely does not fit all. The length, width, and finish all work together to create performance tailored to the job at hand. It's basic engineering, disguised as everyday hardware. Let's break down some of the most common nail types and what they're built for. Finishing nails have small heads and slender bodies, perfect for trim or molding where you want the nail to disappear once painted. Framing nails, on the other hand, are thick and strong. They're used to hold together the skeleton of a house where strength matters more than looks. You've also got masonry nails, which are specially hardened to drive into concrete or brick without bending. Duplex nails have double heads, making them easy to pull out later great for temporary structures like scaffolding or formwork. And cut nails, which have a rectangular cross-section, are still used in traditional flooring because they resist loosening over time. Some nails are even designed to break off cleanly after use. Others, like roofing nails, have wide heads to hold down flexible shingles without tearing through them. There's a design logic behind every variation and usually a construction lesson behind every failure to choose the right one. You might think the longer the nail, the better the grip, but that's only part of the story. What matters is the shank design. Ring shank nails have small ridges that grip wood fibers and resist pulling out. Spiral or screw shank nails twist into wood as they drive in, offering incredible holding power perfect for subfloors or decking where nails might work loose over time. Some nails are even barbed to grip extra tightly, especially in softwoods or sheet materials. The material you're nailing into also plays a role. Plywood reacts differently than hardwood, and certain nails perform better in one than the other. Holding power also depends on how the nail handles seasonal expansion and contraction. Over time, Nails that can't flex or grip tightly can start to work loose, weakening the structure. That's why high hold nails are used in places exposed to movement, like framing, roofing, or sheathing. Not all nails are made from the same metal. Some are galvanized, coated in zinc to resist rust. Others are stainless steel or even copper, used where moisture or corrosion is a concern. You might see cement-coated nails, which have a resin that softens during driving, then hardens for a tight hold. Copper nails are ideal for roofing or boat building because they resist saltwater corrosion. And aluminum nails, while not as strong, are useful for certain non-ferrous or delicate applications. Nail coatings also help reduce friction during driving, making installation smoother and faster. In outdoor construction, Galvanized or coated nails are often required by code for safety and durability. Choosing the wrong finish might not show up right away, but give it one wet season and you'll see rust, staining, or worse, structural failure. Different nails also work with different tools. Collated nails are joined in strips or coils to be fired from nail guns, 
which are faster and more efficient than hammering by hand, especially in large-scale projects. But you can't just load any nail into any nail gun. They come in angled strips, different lengths and various coatings. Use the wrong one and your tool might jam, or worse, misfire. Some nail guns are designed for framing, others for finish work, and some for specific tasks like roofing or flooring. Pneumatic tools need specific air pressure settings to handle the size and strength of each nail. Even the angle at which nails are collated, 15 degrees, 21 degrees, 30 degrees, and so on, matters when it comes to matching tool compatibility and driving efficiency. Knowing your tool and your nail is essential to getting the job done right. It's not just a matter of convenience, it's a matter of safety and performance. Ultimately, the reason there are so many kinds of nails is simple. Not all jobs are the same. You wouldn't use a finishing nail to hold together a deck, and you wouldn't drive a spiral shank framing nail into decorative crown molding. It would split the wood or just look awful. Beyond structure and appearance, the wrong nail can also void warranties or fail building codes. Professionals choose their fasteners as carefully as their lumber, because each material reacts differently over time. That's why building plans often specify exact nail types. It's not overkill, it's engineering. At the end of the day, it's all about performance, precision, and longevity. And nails are just as critical to that as the materials they join. So the next time you're holding a tiny finishing nail or firing a spiral shank framing nail into a stud, take a moment to appreciate the design behind that simple piece of metal. It's more than a fastener. It's a perfectly engineered tool, customized for strength, speed, and longevity. And while most people never give them a second thought, nails quietly hold up our homes, our furniture, and even our art one small tap at a time. They may seem insignificant, but every nail plays a role in the safety and stability of the world we live in. From the smallest picture frame to the tallest skyscraper, they're doing more than just holding things together. They're holding history in place. Behind every sturdy structure is a series of quiet decisions, nail by nail, detail by detail. And those decisions, while small, are what keep the everyday world standing strong. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.